When it comes to biology, sometimes scientists discover things that we've kind of taken for granted, but that surprised everyone. And today we're going to discuss one such discovery coming from a recent study you can find in the description. A study by Alison Edgar and her team on the regeneration of Nemeopsis ladii. The organism you see right here that resembles a jellyfish, but is technically known as the sea walnut, or a type of a comb jelly, unusual organisms that technically inhabit every sea and every ocean out there, and the organisms that kind of stand out because for swimming they actually use cilia, kind of like a typical small cell. But in this case they actually get pretty big. Some of them can be up to a meter and a half, and some of them can possess a lot of complexity. They're also extremely beautiful. But for biologists, they're also special for a different reason. They technically represent either the first or the second step in the evolution when life became multicellular. In other words, a few hundred million years ago, as the life became more and more complex, at some point it evolved from being a single cell to a multicellular organism. And right now it's not entirely certain if this multicellular life became this, or if it was similar to a typical sponge we find in the oceans. Either way, both sponges and comb jellies essentially represent some of the first multicellular life on planet Earth. But something very unusual was discovered in this recent study that potentially implies that maybe this is the first life. Because for some reason, this unusual multicellular organism has not developed a concept of ELO recognition. Now we'll talk about this in a couple of minutes, but first let me show you what was actually discovered. Here as always this was completely by accident, but basically a few months back, researchers behind the study discovered that one of their sea walnuts had a very bizarre shape. This is what it's supposed to look like, but instead it resembled this, as if it was basically some kind of a mutant. But it was still functioning perfectly well and did not have anything weird about it. It responded to being poked, it ate all of the food just fine, and it basically functioned normally. But it had two butts, which kind of made it a little bit unusual. And though at first it was assumed that this was maybe some kind of a mutation, researchers realized that maybe this is actually a result of something much simpler. Maybe this used to be two different sea walnuts that somehow joined together. Which basically meant it was time for science. They took a bunch of sea walnuts and essentially cut them in two, and then placed all of these little pieces into a single tank. Although here the obvious question is, why? Well, it's technically based on previous studies. In a previous study from 2021, Allison Edgar and her team discovered that these organisms potentially possess a very active regeneration system and can even be combined into much larger organisms by literally grafting them together. And so here in this new study, Kei Jokura and his team decided to test their hypothesis. They wanted to see if by cutting a bunch of these organisms, they're going to recombine and create something they discovered by accident. So first, once again, they injured these sea walnuts, but then took pieces from separate organisms and placed them into individual tanks just to see what happens. And intriguingly, after just a few hours, pretty much most of them fused completely into a single body. In other words, they all became these unusual Frankenstein jellies. And though at first, in just the first few hours, they were still individual organisms producing individual reactions to, for example, being poked, after just two hours, they became one. The muscle contraction was synchronized, which suggested that the nervous system joined into one and functioned as if this was a single organism, with everything else, including digestive system and various types of responses, integrating completely. And this by itself is a really bizarre discovery for a lot of biological sciences. First of all, why does this even happen? Well, one potential explanation here is that maybe it allows these organisms to recover faster, because instead of regrowing everything from scratch, they can just join someone else and then function as one. But second of all, why does this even work? And this is where we come to that original term I mentioned before, known as ELO recognition. And this is an extremely important ability for multicellular life to recognize self. This is basically the idea of knowing what self is in order to protect itself from everything else. So for example, the idea behind the immune system all stems from the self-recognition. And so when life became advanced enough to have multiple cells, it had to have an ability to recognize itself for its own protection. For example, in order to distinguish your own tissue from someone else's tissue, all multicellular life evolved the ability to recognize what belongs to you and what belongs to someone else in order to, for example, avoid things like parasites. And there are a lot of different mechanisms to make this happen. For example, every cell in our body will contain antigens 
that are used to identify if something belongs to the body or if it has to be destroyed by the immune system because it's from somewhere else. These antigens, or these proteins that work as a kind of a signaling system, are absolutely crucial for the survival of anything that contains multiple cells. And these allo recognition mechanisms have been seen in all multicellular life. Plants have them, fungi have them, animals have them. And it's even been believed to be fundamental. Basically, a kind of a requirement for multicellular life to survive long term. And that's because how else would we actually be able to tell if there is some kind of a pathogen or some kind of a parasite inside of us trying to essentially steal our food? And in some organisms, it's even more important, even for things like replication. For example, for hermaphrodites, and of course certain plants, this mechanism prevents self-fertilization. And so without having some kind of a sexual partner, if it wasn't for this mechanism, they would be constantly reproducing with themselves, eventually reaching a point where their genes are no longer healthy. And so the self-recognition mechanism has been extremely important to adapt to various challenges. As a matter of fact, in biology, there's even this free rider problem that you can read about in one of the links in the description that essentially discusses the idea of resources and, of course, someone abusing these resources with this allo recognition being one of the potential solutions. But it's obviously not just one technique and one mechanism. It manifests itself differently and does not always involve immune systems. For example, we know that even bacteria seem to contain similar mechanisms, where certain bacteria produce what's known as bacterial isins, or in essence toxins, that seem to target bacteria of similar but not exact species in order to avoid potential competition. Whereas certain marine invertebrates, including certain types of starfish, will often produce extremely aggressive poisons or will even consume each other as part of this allo recognition defense. And so in essence, this unusual phenomenon seems to be more or less universal for a lot of life. But for the first time ever, we've discovered something that doesn't seem to have it. Because right now, this is the only explanation we have for this phenomenon. Here, this organism seems to either not have self-recognition or, more likely, seems to possess an ability to completely disregard it, eventually turning separate organisms into a single self. And right now, the only explanation scientists have is actually, once again, in regards to the evolutionary history. If we assume that these organisms evolved right after single cellular life evolved, they might have actually lacked the genes important for this self-recognition that a lot of other organisms evolved afterwards. And so here, one of the potential implications is that this might have been one of the first multicellular lives to evolve, but it evolved without an important feature present in life afterwards. And because this seems to be the first organism to possess this, in evolutionary biology, this is an extremely important discovery. Right now, there's really no explanation for why this unusual sea walnut does not recognize different tissue and why the immune system does not respond, attacking the tissue from someone else. But because here we actually observe a merger of everything, including, of course, the nervous system, the discoveries here could be super important for various regeneration techniques that could be used on humans as well. Since these jellies can combine into one and function perfectly as if nothing happened, they definitely have a lot to teach us. And it, of course, also makes you kind of question the idea behind self. I mean, for these jellies, what exactly is self? Since in this case, everything merged into one, and the two organisms start to act as one organism, what happens to the previous selves that existed before? And intriguingly, it wasn't just the nervous system, it's even the digestive system as well. Here, surprisingly, when you give food to one end and to the other end, the material is digested and distributed equally, but surprisingly, starts to come out from either one or the other butt at different times. So basically, here, the butts, for some reason, start to take turns. And because these jellies are so unusual, so exciting, and contain these bizarre regenerative abilities, it's extremely likely we're going to be hearing more about them in the next few years. Although right now, one question remains unanswered. We don't really know if this is a long-term solution or if something else happens at the end. Right now, researchers only look at them for three weeks, and after three weeks, they seem to function normally. But we don't really know what happens after that and if they actually change into something else with time. Either way, definitely super exciting research and very exciting discoveries, and discoveries that question our understanding about the idea of self, the idea of evolution of complex life, and if we can maybe apply some of these mechanisms to much more complex organisms like ourselves. For all we know, maybe these unusual jellies use a very strange repair mechanism that can actually be used in humans as well. And so, one day, we'll probably know more. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership 
or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.